In today's video, we will be extracting DNA from 24 pounds of strawberries. All right, maybe you guys have seen this in your biology classes or going around online. A common experiment that's done in biology classes is to extract the DNA out of different things. You can take it from your cheek or from plants such as strawberries, uh, bananas, and even kiwis are really good for taking DNA out of. Even so, a blueberry? Even a blueberry. Everything has DNA. So DNA is the cool stuff that makes you into what you are and makes everything that's living into what it is. But I was wondering, what can you do with 24 pounds worth of DNA? So that's what we're gonna figure out. The basic idea behind today's video is to extract the DNA from strawberries and see what we can do with a bunch of goo. All right, what's step one? All right. Uh, well, step one is get a lot of strawberries. I think we've said that. <laughs> what's step two? We've got a lot of strawberries. Step two is to get the DNA out of them. So it's pretty simple, pretty fun. That's what we brought Grace along for. We need to crush all these I'm strawberries. <laughs> Literally all I'm ever in these videos for. You're a great strawberry crusher. <laughs> I'm thinking we can put a bunch of strawberries into here and have Grace go wine style on it. Huh. Stomp them it's all. It's gonna be so squishy. Mush. Thanks, yes. Kevin. Clean up crew. <laughs> My pants are rolled. I feel like I look the part. This is gonna feel very weird. These are things that you never thought you were going to do in your life, and um, here you are. So. Have you ever crushed grapes before? No. Oh. It's so squishy. How's that feel? Oh yeah, just get some good running man going in there. It smells super fruity in here. I feel like as I'm squishing these, I'm releasing a lot of their essential smells, which is fantastic. It's been a very fruity day here in uh, the studio. We made a giant fruit cup earlier, and so that was very fruity smelling. And now we've got strawberries. So, solid day if you ask me. That's looking good, Grace. Thank you. So our next step is actually we're gonna add our lysis buffer, or just a salt, water, and soap, which will actually help to break holes in these cells that you've started to separate by this so, physical stretching. water and soap. Now we've got our salt water, and the reason that we want this salt water is that it's actually going to bind to our DNA as it's coming out of our cells. And in order to get that out of there, we need to poke holes in our cells, which is where our soap comes in. So cells, on the science level are actually made up of the same type of molecules that soaps are, which are fats. And this soap will poke holes in the cells and the salts will pull the DNA right out. And the more smashed, the better. Remember, cells are so tiny that you can't see them. So all of these chunks in here are still made up of hundreds of cells. It's just like cells. really going between my toes and it feels really funky. You ready for a bath? No, yeah, I'm already in a bath. <laughs> Ooh, it's very cold. Now what do I do? Keep, Keep stomping. <laughs> Mix up all that soapy salt water with the strawberries. So when we're pulling the, these out, tell us about what goes together. So the C and the G goes together, correct? Oh yeah, so DNA is made up of those four letters that you said beforehand. A, T, C, and G. Adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Boom. There we go. So the A and the T are married together. They like to make these bonds. Right. And the C and the G like each other. Cool. You don't like them to mix around, and when they do, we call that a mutation. So when you have cancer, it's normally because you've had an A matches with a C or a G matches with a T, mm -hmm. which all of a sudden says, this shouldn't be happening. So what's really interesting is my sister actually has a genetic mutation. She has NF1. And so basically on her 17th chromosome and her 22nd exon, she has a double T. So her DNA says, whoop, hold on, I don't have an A here, I have two T's here matching up, and her DNA stops duplicating. I like that you brought in the fact that she has this genetic condition, because one of the cool things that scientists are able to do with DNA similar to this, is we can actually use medications to go in and change that mutation. Mm -hmm. So someday, not too far away from now, your sister could have that A, or that T, turned back to an A. All right, cool, Grace. That looks fairly well mushed up. So it feels quite mushy. It looks like tomato sauce. It smells better, though. It smells great. All right, well, I guess the next step is we want to get rid of the chunks and just kind of filter in some of the juice okay. into here. So the, the cells are so small that they'll actually be able to pass through the filter. Uh, so everything that's in the liquid will be proteins and cells, and everything that gets caught will be stuff that we don't want.
All right, so we have all of our strawberry juice in here. Grace, this is thanks to your beautiful stomping. It was teamwork. I stomped, you guys siphoned. I Nate, mean, yeah. what more could you ask for? Nate strained, and now we have this tube of our strawberry juice. So if you look in here, what you can see Hello. is that in our strawberry juice, you actually see these like white clusters and clumps in here. And so what this is, is that some of it's actually gonna be cell material, but a lot of this is actually the protein and the DNA that's starting to clump together uh, inside of our mixture. So we have just one step left. We're going to add our- What is it? Oh, geez. I love the excitement, Grace. Love Science it. Science <laughs> makes me happy. So we're gonna add our cold isopropyl alcohol or ethanol. And what this is going to do is that it's actually going to separate the DNA from the water. So why do we need the cold alcohol? So using cold alcohol and cold water is good because it'll actually slow down the enzymatic activity of the proteins that want to degrade free DNA. Because if there's free DNA out there, that's what viruses have, and you don't want them sticking around. So this will stop our DNA from getting broken down and allow us to extract it. I like it. So this is really cool, actually. If you look in here right now, you can already see, Whoa. see this thickness as it's separating? So this thickness is all DNA that's, it's dirty DNA right now, so it's, it's incorporated with RNA and proteins. But yeah, everything that's starting to come up right here, that is all the DNA from these strawberries. No way. Yep. Wow. I did this in high school on a small scale, but on a bigger scale, it is way, way cooler. I have never done this uh, this large of scale either, nor have I ever seen it. So I'm really excited to see this. When you're doing this on a small scale at home, the real key to this is you wanna have about equal parts uh, ethanol as you do your actual mix. And then the more that you let it sit, the more that this is going to rise up through there. I don't know about you guys, but from the scientist's perspective, what I think is amazing is that this stuff that's in your hands right now is the exact instructions that make the whole plant. So all you need is to start with this, and that makes the whole strawberry plant, the berries, and everything. And it's the same stuff that's inside of every single one of your cells. So the reason that your eyes are green or blue or brown is all due to the instructions in this DNA. So another fun DNA fact is that, yeah, as you can see, you're pulling this all out, but it all folds on to itself, it right? It does, so, it really wants to be with its friends. Exactly, it's, it's attracted to itself. But if you were able to pull just a single strand from one cell out and stretch it all the way out, your DNA would reach about five feet. And that's from a single cell. That's almost as tall as me. So this is also really cool. So the, the ethanol, it's nonpolar, right? So it's kind of like spreading all of the, the DNA out together. So look at how like fluffy this looks, kind of like cotton candy. But then once you pull it out, it just like condenses onto itself again. And so we had that big chunk of fluff and all it looks like when it's out here is this little bit of slime. If you guys have any other science experiments you'd like to see us scale up, let us know. Or if you have any ideas of what to do with this DNA, drop a line down in the comments. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button right down in the corner. Till next time, see you later.